guys, welcome to another episode of the Ali Show. And today we have um, one of the pioneers of combat sports here in New Zealand, Mr. Lolo. Hey, Muli. How are you, Lolo? Good, thank you, Ali. It's good to see you. Um, we're here today at uh, the gym, City Liga. Um, I just wanted to ask. Uh, I I've heard um, you know some 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 people say it as Balmoral Liga, and some who say it as City Liga. W- what is the difference there, or could you maybe explain to us about it? Um, City Liga is where I started. I see. Uh, Sifu Philip Lam started City Liga back in 1975. Uh, I was lucky enough to be amongst the earlier students. Mm. I started training in 1978. Oh wow! Yeah, so. Um, and 1987, I started the uh, Liga, uh, which is just down the road from here I see. Uh, at, at the time. So yeah, so we we, we uh, like a, a, a break off from City Liga, but uh, now I'm here. I see, I see. And so the um, when you set up uh, Belmore Liga, and so you were running it for quite a while, and then um, when did you did you close that one off and move back um, there? Or? Well, it, it's. Uh, it, it was just a space where the the church used for um, put all their chunks and people donated to church. And one day I I, I was just looking around for gym, um, and ran out of ideas. So I, I saw the church. I went inside, have a little prayer, and I came out. And I saw one of my mates. He was uh, he was a caretaker. I see. And um, his name is John Merrick. And he asked me, "Hey." Uh, you still doing your your Bruce Lee stuff? I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, I am, but I, I just just looking for a place to start a gym. Mm. So he took me around the back um, and showed me where the gym is. And, yeah. and I guess that was his job, supposed to clean up the the mess. But I'm glad he he took me there. So we we went inside and uh, we 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 cleaned up the place and. Uh, when it was all uh, all the chunks had been taken to the chunk yard, it was already a gym. You know, back in the days, uh, uh, boxing was part of the options for for sports in New Zealand. Oh, okay. And uh, it was a, a old boxing gym, and um, and yeah, when it was finished, it was it was a, it was a gym, and that's how we started, 1987. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. <clears throat> um, but one of the questions um, I have is. How did you come about into combat sports, or, or maybe you actually were, from what I understand, were a fighter first before you uh, got into coaching? Is that correct? Yes, I mean it was like a natural progression, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I have a similar story as probably a lot of the of the fighters now, including Eugene Behrman. I, I had I inflicted an injury from rugby. I, I broke my collarbone and. Um, and I would just, you know, went to town, went to the movie, and, and I was just walking along um, Elbert Street, and I saw the sign, uh, you know, Liga, and I decided to go and check it out. I I remember I walked in there, and I had my bell, bo- bell bottom jeans on. <laughs> I think it was the last one before they went out of fashion. And, uh, <laughs> and I saw them sort of, you know, uh, doing their training, and they were, you know, walking in line, doing sweeping and kicking and stuff, and... Mm. And I would sit there for a long time, two minutes, <laughs> and, and I went and asked if I could join in. And mm. and uh, Sifu Philip Lim said, if you want to train, you can train, you know, $25 uh, joining fee and $25 a month. And I had 50 bucks in my pocket. Yeah. And I gave all my 50 bucks to wow. join and then train with my bell bottom jeans on. <laughs> and um, that's how it started. And um, I was hooked. And uh, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That, uh, what what a coincidence! <laughs> <laughs> I think I walk home after that because I use my bus oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, that's pretty interesting. So, 1978 uh, City Liga, and then 87 when when you started uh, Balmoral Liga. Yeah. Um, from um, from what I know, you have trained uh, quite a few big names in the sport. You know, names like. Uh, Ray Seffo, Mark Hunt, um, Eugene Berman, Doug Viney. Um, what, what was it like? Uh, do you have any um, interesting stories of how they came about to train with them? Or? Hey you, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. 
when, when I was looking for a place to train, it was, it was, uh, it's more, it was more of a place for me just to train. And, um, you know, uh, at a time, uh, City Liga was based at uh, New Lynn. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so when I found a place was just down the road from, from my parents' or my house, um, it was just a, a group of friends and family that I was training. I didn't have any uh, commercial um, advertising or anything. Like that. It was just a group of friends. Mm. And uh, and then my friend Tojo and, and Peter Flynn, they were helping me out. And, uh, and, and we sort of built slowly from there. And then there was... Uh, some tournaments around and I get all the, my students and say, let's go and fight. And then, and you just start from there. And then before you know it, you start training guys for New Zealand title fights and international mm. title fights. Um, you know, it was no, it was, it was nothing. There was not goal or anything that it was just a place to train and then just progress from there. And next minute we start having a few, uh, Going into fighters all the competitions and, then, and yeah, and then next minute we start having trip overseas, and you know, guys were fighting in Asia and you know Japan, and mm. you know, so but it, it was it was it was just yeah, it was a fluke, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, who was um, um, some of the um, earlier fighters that you trained when you opened uh, Balmoral Liga? Uh, well, it, it's. Uh, well, well I, I actually had a good head start because uh, my friend uh, Wayne Wanger, he was already established a, a gym at South Auckland where he had guys like Philip Muasan, um, Tyson Carissa, and then he uh, he, he got a he got a, a job promotions and he wanted some someone to look after his, some of his fighters and and I just happened to start at the time. And you know he brought some of these guys um, to me. I mean, there's those two names they uh, sent out: Dyson Carissa and um, Philip Muasan. And um, they were already high-level strikers. Mm. And um, yeah, and 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 we just built from there. Uh, but like I said, it was just um, I look back in, in, in my career, and then, uh, and um, I asked the same question you just asked: how, yeah. you know, how did it happen? But uh, it was more like a passion. Mm. Than, than the goal of becoming a fighter and a coach, and you know, mm. I, I was still I was still fighting when I was coaching. You know? Oh, nice! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of keep active as well yeah, at the same yeah, time, and yeah. uh, it, it, I mean, there's definitely a lot of stuff you can learn for your, you know, for yourself when you're actually doing it. You know, yeah, of course. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, uh, when you start coaching, you start having more. Um, self-awareness you know you start aware of, of mistakes that you make um, and able to actually see things from inside out or vice versa if you like mm. um, you know train for fighters you just listen and you do uh, when you become a, a coach and, and, and fight at the same time you actually you know you have a, a much more broader understanding and you have to be more analytical and you have to make sure that if you do things wrong, your student will do it wrong as well. So yeah, yeah. It, it did help me with, with my fight career. Was it was it like um, quite hard in those days, um, running your own gym and uh, trying to like uh, organize everything and you know get get everyone to like come to training because you know back then maybe was it was it like a, a very popular sport during those days in nah. the eighties. No, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, it was, uh, um, you know, when, when you talk about, uh, you know, like the fight games, now today, I think there's a fight in every two weeks in, in, in Auckland alone. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the days, I think you'll be, be lucky to have two fights an entire year. Oh, wow. You know, so, <laughs> so what we used to do is take the student and, and enter them on karate tournament, point tournament, any tournament we can, get you know, into. you can get into. and. Wow. Uh, and uh, but yeah, that was how we we, we gained experience, uh, you know, from for some of our young students. But yeah, it was just uh, yeah. When when um oh oh maybe I should say um at City Liga, did it start off as a like a Muay Thai gym or a kickboxing gym? Was there one particular um uh, one particular um, like style that stuck out? More than the others, um, we, we we were lucky that uh, that we had Philip Sibbles, uh, 
Sifu Philip Lam, who he was probably the the only promoter at at the time. Who uh, now there, there was no one style. We there, we used to have a, a tournament open to all different styles. Uh, so it was kind of like mixed martial yeah, arts. Yeah, yeah, it was already. like a mixed martial yeah. arts already at, at the time. Except there were sometimes we used to fight on the floor, and then, <laughs> and I remember guys get you know um, you know get hip throw and then dump on the floor and there was <laughs> they lost by knockout you know <laughs> but yeah uh, yeah there was back in the old YMCA days uh, mm. yeah no it was more like a a freestyle where boxers wrestlers jiu jitsu you know much everybody exactly and then we, we used to fight like a tournament and and um, we end up in the final and there was one tournament there was me my cousins Alex Tui and and Wen Wanga because the the, the weight category is from 60 to 70, <laughs> 70 to 80, and 80, anything above 80 is heavyweight. So we oh, try our best to make sure that we under, under 80. 80. <laughs> That's a big up from 80 all the way yeah. up. But yeah, wow. there was, you know, uh, but for some reason, there was one tournament there. We had about, I, I don't know, maybe over 20 people now in our, in our weight class. And wow. and me and my cousin Alex and, and Wayne from the same club, we end up in the final. Oh, and, wow. And, and of course, we, we didn't fight each other, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, I, that, is that a quote, like, um, you know, people from the same gym don't fight each other? I or? mean, nowadays, it's, you know, there's big money price and mm. people pay big money to go and watch you fight. You got to mm. fight. But back in the days, we, we, we choose not to fight each other. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, they're going to, those two will kick my butt. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the oldest one, so I, was, I get to keep the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were better fighters than me, but yeah. yeah. I think it's um, it's it's harder <coughs> when you have to. You know, sparring is different because, um, like the intensity of the fight is different. But when you have to fight your own teammate or someone who trains with you all the time, it's like it's a bit harder. You know, I feel to. Yeah, I mean, it's it depends. I mean, nowadays that uh, you you got to fight now. Like I said, it's it's all. Like televisions, money, mm. sponsorship, you, you you have no choice. Mm. Uh, but, you know, back in the days, it was amateur. And um, and we know that in order to beat somebody, you, you need to beat the hell out of them. Yeah. <laughs> and and didn't, we didn't feel like doing that on mates because mm. we, yeah. you know, it was just amateur. And, yeah, you know, good yeah. mates and you're training yeah. together yeah. and yeah. like, you know, you don't want to really cause yeah. harm. On the topic of um, sparring, um, we were saying... What, what, what your style of coaching or um, how you get your fighters to train for their fights uh, what are your thoughts on sparring like um, do you get them to go hard or you know light sparring technical sparring what is the kind of stuff that or you kind of do it all well it depends I mean I, if, if you talk about maintenance sparring and there is a technical sparring and there is a, a high intensity sparring um, and of course, uh, as, as long as you have two guys on the same level, you can let it go a little bit. Um, with the maintenance throughout the year when there's no fights, then you have to be carefully, uh, you know, monitor and, and observe the, the, the young guys who are sparring with, with the more experienced guys mm. to make sure you, you develop them. Mm. Um, and then when once they get to a point where uh, they're ready for big fights, then you can let it go a little bit. Uh, you know, it's not mm. too much of the extreme. Mm. You can't have it too light either. You can't have to, you know. Mm. But I understand that there's a different level of 10 in terms of um, measuring power, you know. Mm. So a lot of guys, uh, they think they're going easy, but in fact, uh, their speed explosiveness hits other people as well. So you, yeah. gotta, you just have to watch that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't really have a set formula where... Or you, you only go light, you know, because mm. some of them need to be, you know, to be pushed a little bit higher. But mm -hmm. yeah, as long as it doesn't get to a point where you spar in anger, mm. you know, as long as nothing personal, you know. Controlling the, um, yes. I think the big one is controlling the emotions because maybe sometimes you might take a shot that hurt you a little bit more. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And then you just, you know, lose control. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously that's not good, you know, because when you're training, you don't want to hurt your uh, teammates. Yeah. Mm. Don't get me wrong, there's mm. a lot of people who become very successful by, 
you know, by having all out war at the gym. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen it a lot. And, yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, you just try your best not to make sure that your fighter doesn't get injured for the fights. Mm. Um, and also, like, the, the people who are helping you is, like, you don't want to hurt the tools to help you, you know? Of course, to, yeah. To uh, perform your best. Mm. Um, on the story of, uh, uh, I like to ask about the story of uh, Junior Far. Um, he actually, we did, when we did the podcast with Junior and he was telling us about the story of how he um, got stuck at the airport and um, he had to ring his missus and his missus actually contacted you. And uh, could you tell us from your point of view um, what happened? Well, we got a call from, uh, from Mumbai Fighters. It's a, a World Series of Boxing that run by Iba. Mm. Uh, far around of three minutes, you know, like um, boxing. Mm. Um, like with, with no headgear, it was like professional boxing. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> that was like in, in those days, it was the step before going into the professionals. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But you're still eligible to, to fight for, uh, to qualify the Olympic Games and, mm. and some of the amateur tournaments. Anyway, uh, we got a call because uh, one of the heavyweight uh, got injured. Yeah. And it was a short notice. So, um, you know, after a discussion with, with Junior and his family, and, you know, uh, he was all good to go. I mean, he wasn't super fit, but he wasn't unfit either. Junior was the type of fighter at the time who was keep himself fit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just before he left, we realized that his passport is, will be expired in six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, if your passport expires six months, you can't have a travel visa. Uh, and I explained it to uh, to Mumbai fighters uh, rep. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, would you, you know, if if you risk this, that you might have to pay more money if mm. Junior gets stuck in in mm. in Hong Kong, and you know. And yeah, yeah, all good. So Junior, um, lucky that Junior got a Tongan passport. Mm. He's also got a Tongan passport, so he was able to travel on that one. But once you get down to to, to Hong Kong, he can't go any further because he would need a, a visa, yeah, Indian visa. New Zealand passport doesn't need to, except doesn't that he was, to. you know, yeah, it's a visa yeah, exemptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, it was hard to get hold of the rep from Mumbai, mm. and I just remember my mate uh, Lawrence Tuasa, who was also a, a mean world class boxer, yeah. You know? And he was working in Hong Kong at the time, so I, I was you know, he fighting there, or um? I think he was he was there. He was he, he had a, a working contract. He was coaching at some gym or something. You know? oh, I see, I see. And um, anyway, I, I, I contacted him, and lucky I, I I got him. I said, wow. I said, bro, can you you gotta help? You know, one of my boys over there is mm -hmm. stuck, and you know, and he said, where's in the airport? You know, and uh, I said, oh yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go look for him and tell him his name. You know, one problem, he's yeah. never met Junior before. Oh yeah. <laughs> He doesn't know what Juna looked like. As a, and here I was trying to explain everything. As a, yeah, he's about six foot five, yeah. you know, good looking boy, you know, fit looking boy, you know. I'm pretty sure he's standing out because, you know, all the Asian there. Yeah, a brown, a yeah. brown boy. <laughs> but, you know, in Junior, he'll probably crumble up in the, in the seat. And, <laughs> so you can't really tell how, how big he was. Yeah. So uh, poor Lawrence was looking for him and... You know, and the only way to go there, you had to go by train. Yep. You know, and it's just not like how the the Kowloon the Kowloon uh, airport. This is the mm. new one, and it's probably take about an hour to get there. You know, so he went there, looked for Junior, couldn't find Junior. He came back to his lovely wife, who never I've never met. He yeah. never met Junior, and, and she said, "Look, don't come back home until you find him." <laughs> <laughs> They're just a uh, island lover, I guess. Yeah. You know. Mm. So Lawrence went back there, look and look, and then and he found Junior. You know? <laughs> uh, just just to cut a, a long story short, um, came back. They took him home, fed him, mm. stayed with the family. Uh, I think uh, the next day or two days later, took him to uh, to the New Zealand um, embassy. Uh, embassy. Yeah. And uh, to, uh, and get his visa renewed. Mm. We'll just take a, probably another two days. Mm. Uh, so by this time, Junior. By the time he arrived in Mumbai, he only had hours mm. before he opened the ring. Wow. So I think we got there at, uh, at around 2 o'clock, rushes, medical and everything, and 
by six o'clock they had a stadium and he, <laughs> he fought around seven o'clock. Wow. And he fought a monster wow. by the name of uh, Makhmadov, yeah. who was a uh, Russian all champion in 2010. Oh, my you know? goodness. And, and he beat him. Yeah, he and, won. And, and he won. And, and to me, that's probably Junior's best fight ever, wow. including his professionals, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, um, you know, because the guy was a, you know, he, he was a, he's a beast, and even now he's he's knocking everybody out. He's, I think he recently knocked out um, who's that guy that fought the uh, uh, Klitschko, knocked out Klitschko, uh, Samuel Peters. Samuel he, Peters. He, he yeah. knocked out Samuel Peters in the first round. Well, <laughs> recently, that was the guy that Junior fought. You name oh, a bit on 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 days notice and arrive. Yeah, and with all the struggles. Yes, oh, yeah. My so goodness. that was the best. Uh, to me, that was Junior's best fight. You know. Yeah. What do you think about um, his uh, possible upcoming fight with uh, Joseph Parker? That's a very interesting fight. You know, it's, I, um, I know that uh, as an amateur, Junior, you know, Junior uh, had a better of of, of uh, Joseph. Mm -hmm. But now Joseph now has been fought a lot of good quality opponents. And and um, and beat them, so of course uh, Joseph will be the, the favorite. But you know, mm -hmm. you never know what what kind of junior is going to show up on a on 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 a night. It'll be an interesting fight. Definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. It's going to be, and it's a big fight for like uh, New Zealand, you know, and having two of the best, yeah, uh, two of the top fighters in the country go against each other. It's, yes, yeah, it'll be really interesting. Um, uh, moving on, um. We've, we've heard some of the stories that Eugene um, was telling us about and even on his uh, little um, highlight show that he had um, on uh, UFC, um, he was talking and sharing about, or even some of the podcasts where he was sh uh, sharing his experience of um, one of his boys going over and uh, to, was it uh, Tahiti? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to Tahiti, having a fight and uh, unfortunately um, he suffered an injury which uh, caused him to uh, pass away. Mm. And uh, he was also saying um, how after that incident, he almost wanted to quit everything and uh, leave the whole sport altogether. Mm. And uh, I understood um, you were one of the people who actually talked to him about that. Could you just um, yeah. talk to yeah, us a little was, bit about it? He, he wasn't the only one that was quit over that. I was actually thinking about it as well. Um, because that phone call from the promoter, they're looking for uh, for heavyweight and and uh, and a lightweight. And I know Wilman was training with Eugene, and I know Wilman was holding us his own against uh, the the best best boxers around his weight. Um, so I I, I contact Eugene, um, and um, sadly, um, I got a phone call that night from Eugene, and he was crying over the phone, and um, it was a very was very very tough uh, because uh, Wilman was a personal friend of mine, and even though he was uh, he was training mostly at at at, uh, at city kickboxing, he would show up also to our gym and he helped me with my my kids' classes as well. Mm -hmm. so he's a personal friend. It's like it's like losing someone in your family, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it was it was very very tough, but I had to encourage uh, Eugene, you know. Um, when when you talk and 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 try to contact friends in Tahiti to go and to go and see him and yeah I I, I we, we all feel so helpless you know but you know uh, having said that I we just finished a, a call setting today and I was telling that story to um, you know some of the young guys mm. that um, you know the you know the, excuse me um, the, the the harder the test you know the bigger the rewards and and um, it wasn't just uh, women. They had another. I think in the period of less than twelve months, they had three of their top guys pass away. One was at a gym, one in, in Tahiti, and one was accident. Wow. Uh, but you know, Edison, one of them will make um, anybody quit. But they 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 show their character and they they move on and you know because you still have to face the family and meet the family and you know and and now look where they are they're the you know top team in the in the world mm -hmm. so yeah hey you don't forget to subscribe like and share this video 
understand um, Doug and Eugene were both um, started off like training at your gym before they um, actually went out to do what you similar to what you did yourself to start your own gym. Uh, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about that um, um, transition? Well, uh, the, 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 the city kickbox was started by another student. His name is Juan Marshall. Okay. And then um, and he was moving to Waihek and he, he wanted to sell the business and mm. and and and, and Ducky talked to me about it and um, said well, so what do you think you know because Ducky was working a lot of time at Les Mills with uh, another friend Mark Michaels and and uh, he, he went and see me about it so, so, shall I do it I said you know yeah you have my support you know like you know you can take some of the boys to come and help you and you mm. know. Um, and you can build your own client base from there. You, you know the right position, prime place, and, and exposure and, and stuff. So, uh, so that's uh, so, so Ducky started that, and he brought in Eugene and some of the other Belmore trainers to to help uh, um, train some of the. You know, yeah, that, that's how it started. Yeah, and uh, Tristam as well. Yes, that yes. Tristam got um, mm. yeah. So it's interesting. Um, you know when you, what it's you know having gone through that experience yourself and then to see your own students later on go and start, you know, mm. their own gym of their own, you must be, and looking at what they achieve now, you know, you must be very proud, you know, as yeah. a as yeah. a teacher and mm. as a coach. And I, and I think it's going to get better and better. I think the um, New, New Zealand, um, you know, fight, uh, you know, um, fight game is it's going to get better and better because I know it's not going to end from there. There will be guys who are uh, training at City Kickboxing or even here. They're going to move on and 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 and, uh, and just yeah, and then just start their own thing and start mm -hmm. producing more and more champions for sure. Yeah, yeah, like um, like one one of the other ones would be the interesting ones would be Ray Sefo and mm -hmm. uh, what he has done. And uh, doing and still doing now. Yes. You know, going into the US. Uh, how was your experience like um, with uh, Ray Sefo? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, when it comes down to, to, to delegations, um, again, I was telling the story with some of my uh, younger students there uh, running a camp uh, during school holidays and, you know, 15 to 18 year old young guys, uh, you know, I, I take them through the, you know, uh, goal setting and and I talk about some of those stories to to inspire them and um, and I remember as soon as I start sit down with Ray Sefo and start talking about possibility of of uh, world title fight. This after only his fifth fight, wow. and, and and Ray already talk about then a world champion after only his fifth fight, wow. and uh, you know we, we talk about it and um, and I said well if you want to be a world champion you got you got to do the work you know mm. got to do the mahi. And I remember Ray was uh, uh, telling the, the boys the story how the entire year Ray only missed out three training sessions from January to December. No oh, kidding. Wow. You know? <laughs> after fight, he'll be the first one on on Monday afternoon at the gym waiting. For, you know, when I arrived there for the door to open, and wow. yeah, so he was the first one to arrive. He was the first one there, and 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 the last one to leave. And he would come on my on my because uh, I was running the same system. Now I was then like you have a uh, I wouldn't say a beginner's class like a general class where people can mix um, you know fighters or new people. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a beginner's class. Yeah, uh, we, we have the the more experienced guy help the new guys who come in. Mm -hmm. You know that's how we we start the development. You know. Yeah. Um, and then um, and Ray would come to that class and he stayed there for the fighters class and wow. and without fail he, he he only missed about three entire. Free class for the you know, entire, entire year. year, yeah. So wow, that's so, a lot of commitment, yeah. dedication yeah. as well. Um, you've obviously um, traveled a lot, uh, you know, going for international fights, you know, and uh, even local fights and all that um, with uh, kickboxing fights or MMA fights and all that. Um, what are some of the more interesting stories that you uh, have from uh, this travels? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where do I start? <laughs> oh, we, we had some funny events, you know. We had funny events at some, you know. Uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy. There's some crazy stories, yeah. but you know, it's uh, you, you, if you got two weeks, I'll tell you. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's uh, you know, uh, 
one one of the funniest thing that we have ever been to. I mean, and this is only one of them. Okay, yeah. um, we went to China. I think it was 1993 or 94. It was me, Ray Sefo. Uh, guy go Ellen Drew from Bataille's Gym, Moni and um, and I think the Mrs. Brothers, and um, it was the old Kowloon Airport. Okay, mm. so uh, this is just after the the what do you call the the communist uh, wall went down, so yeah. people started traveling between Hong Kong and China. China. So um, there was a hail uh, storm in 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 Hong Kong. And Hong Kong had a had the shortest runway, mm. okay. So um, all flights had to be delayed by twelve hours. Wow. And of course, people were going back and forth between China and and Hong Kong uh, by train. So if you missed that out, you had to book about a month. Oh, so my. we we arrived in 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 in, um, in Hong Kong uh, eventually. You know, mm. twelve hours later, of course, we missed the train. Mm. You, you, we can't get another train. You know. Oh, because my. it was fully booked, because people just go crazy, you know. Yeah, fighting to get uh, yeah, on the trains. And but we have this minivan, and and there was an inspector of police in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what the hell is this inspector of police doing here? And then uh, so me, Ray, Alan True, and a couple of uh, young guys, and John Conway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we uh, there was no motorway at the time. Yeah. people were still building okay. um, the, the, the the motorway, and and this guy was driving like crazy. <laughs> because we have to arrive there on time uh, at at Guangzhou, yeah, and Guangzhou was right at the neighbor. But because th there was no motorway, yeah. so it took us another twelve hours to go twelve hours flight from here to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Another twelve hours drive from Hong Kong to Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Wow! And then, yeah, but uh, they were still building road and underground, uh, you know, train and. Yeah. And this guy was driving on a footpath, driving everywhere. We just missed this big, <laughs> big truck. And in the first hour, we were all scared and angry. We wanted to kill the driver. And and and, and Aaron, Aaron Drew said, I'm going to kill him. He said, no, no, I'm going to kill him first. But this was 12 hours. And yeah. by the fifth or sixth hours, oh, that was a close one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we were all relaxing. <laughs> just, and this guy was just, we got stopped by army military guys oh and they already reached it and, and that's now i realized why the police inspector was there for to calm things down uh, you know so okay. and they let us go again you know so yeah, uh, so he was there to he was there to save us you know oh so yeah because that's probably the craziest driver in china <laughs> and, and, we, and we needed him to be on time <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> Oh boy, and uh, I imagine in those days, like you know, you have like potholes on the road. Oh, Jeepers! And, and 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 at the time, we, you know, we we were so angry at the beginning, but then we start. Oh, what can you do? Yeah, <laughs> Must well just relax, you know. So <laughs> he knows the road. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, even if uh, one of you uh, decide to uh, to, to oh, take the wheel and yeah, drive, he like, was, you know, he was crazy. You know, that's, <laughs> I don't think anybody can drive like him. You know, <laughs> yeah, they they, they hand picked him. You know. <laughs> He must have uh, he must have uh, quite a reputation over there. It must be. Yeah, for you. But well, did, did you guys make it? We made there? it. We made it. We made it. Just you know, we got off the the bus and get the ground, and you know. <laughs> oh my! Oh yeah. my! So um, you know, with all that travel story, obviously that's one of the many stories that you have. I'm sure. Um, well, interesting question I had from a, a, one of your previous fighters was he was asking me, um, should, should, uh, that I should ask you about. Um, of all the fighters that you've traveled with, um, is there um, which was which was the best uh, experience or fighter that you've traveled with, and which one's the worst? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this this is actually from Cairo. So Cairo was asking this question. Um, oh, Cairo, Cairo is one of the best guys to travel with, you know, and and you know, uh, it's, it's all fighters that that I've traveled with, they they're like families. Mm. You know, and uh, but 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 Carol, um, you know, when I when I go over to to Hamilton, I, I stay in the house, or they come and stay with us. You know, like they they like families. But I can't, yeah, I can't really, I can't really it's, say. It's hard I, to say. To yeah, I can't really say I, I have a, a really bad one because I take a lot of experience. You know, like, and you know, in the last thirty plus years, and. You know, if we have experience, it will be because of the promoter, mm -hmm. you know. 
Uh, because sometimes we would stay in a, in a five-star plus hotel. The next minute, we'll stay on a, on a place where the rats running around. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I wouldn't change those experiences, yeah. you know, as part mm-hmm. of the, you know. So it's not, it's not because of the, you know, the fighters. Sometimes it's, you know, it's having to deal with the dodgy promoters. And, yeah. you know, that's, it, it, yeah. and that's what makes the, uh, yeah. the whole trip interesting. Exactly, yeah. You know. And even, Carol, we, we, we've been in, say, five-star hotel. And the next minute, we'll stay almost like a, a backpacker. <laughs> But you know we we love it. You know, just it's a companion that mm. that makes the trip. It's not the yeah. not the problem. That's how I look at it. You know? Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. And have you had like um, you know uh, what, what is like one of the worst uh, you know of or the maybe I would say like tougher experiences like you know obviously when you travel um, for overseas fights and all that you know you, you don't really have much control of like you know. Uh, accommodation or food or like getting around and stuff like that have you had um any like uh, tough experiences with that uh yeah yeah i think it was only one it was it's a one-off where but there was just a communication breakdown um we went but this was from boxing not not uh, Mm. kickbox Mm -hmm. or mma and you know we went to the to the world champion i think 2011 and we arrived there, and and our money was from the from the boxing association. McIntyre was supposed to transfer um, into my account, so mm-hmm. we can so we can pay in advance mm-hmm. when we get to Azerbaijan. Yeah. And and the money wasn't there, you know. Mm. So, um, excuse me. So I, I I I made all the phone calls, and of course, it was hard to communicate because the time different and mm. stuff. But they assured me the money's going to be in my account. But when I'm going to draw the money, there's no money there. Oh, wow. It was lucky that we have an, an American guy that, you know, I, my we needed, uh, I think, 4000 US dollar up front. And wow. they wanted it in cash. Ooh. And this is in the Middle East, you know? Yeah. And um, when, what year was this? 2011. 2011. You know, Azerbaijan, yeah. um, Baku. Baku, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, world champ, and um, I, my card was limited. It was only two thousand. <laughs> it was Beach Junior Fire, Lomalito, and then one of the other trainers, mm. and you know, and we were stuck there. Lucky, I, I know some of the one of the American uh, trainers, one of the American, uh, you know, people in uh, in Iba. Yeah, you know, uh, Ray Santana, and we asked, can you please stall us some time? Well, yeah. give me time to. Mm-hmm. So, so they let us stay, you know. Uh, wow. Otherwise, we would have been, you know, don't stuck. know what we can do. Stuck. Yeah, it was, it was oh quite goodness. scary because, yeah. I mean, I, especially in 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 the Middle East, I, you know, I I have really to all the places in America, US, <laughs> Australia. I, I feel safe anywhere. Yeah, you have but, a lot of connections. Yeah, got a connection, even the UK mm. uh, and Europe. But you know, we 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 got into Middle East, and I know no one there. Yeah. Know, so it was quite scary, but we mm-hmm. got through. Well, yeah, luckily, yeah. <laughs> you, you had to stay outside of the. Yeah. I think that that's one of like the harder situations to be in. You know, yes. when you reach a country and then you're stuck. You know, yeah. or like uh, money situations. But yeah. but thank goodness, you, you know, it was not a matter of like uh, losing your. It, you had your card, yeah. but it's just you had to sort out the small little things. Yes. But uh, you know, yeah. I. But but they, they we we stole them and we, we didn't get the money until about three days later. Oh. You but know, they, so, they just allow you yeah, guys to which they contact me on a daily basis yeah. and, <laughs> you know and yeah but you know lucky what, we one of the it. like some of the scary ones that I've heard before where people actually lose their um, passport and everything passport yeah. or yeah. lose their wallet and um, well I personally have experienced losing my passport before yeah. in an overseas country and um, it, it was not a, a pleasant experience yeah but um, you know you, you gotta find ways <laughs> to deal with it you know you're like uh, oh no what do I do yeah. now yeah. But um, I think at, at that point when it happens, it's always hard in the beginning. Yes. But once you start to put it together, you're like, okay, yeah, I'll be all right, you know. And uh, I, was, I was just joking with Junior as well about him. Uh, if Lawrence didn't find him, you know. Yes. Uh, the, things the would have, and things would have gone wrong, very wrong, you know. I mean, and it, and the, and you, you know, I had to see what happened if if mm. if uh, Lawrence wasn't there, you know. Yeah. And, and it was just lucky. I mean, I. I know some some people in Hong Kong. Mm. Like even even in Hong Kong, I, I would feel safe in Hong Kong. Mm. But you know, I wasn't there with with Junior. Yeah. You know? So it was just sheer luck that 
Lawrence, Lawrence was, there, was and, there, and 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 he had a wife who's so persistent. Go and find Junior, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was joking with Junior yeah. probably the year, uh, and he's never met. She never met me or Junior, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's so, definitely a good lady, very good lady, good, good, yeah. kind-hearted lady. Wow, that was um, I, you know, I was just joking with him. You could have been kidnapped by the people in Hong Kong, and uh, <laughs> they'll probably use you for uh, cheap labor or you know, free labor. You know, <laughs> a big strong boy, and you carry some stuff. <laughs> washing dishes. <laughs> I think. Oh, I think washing dishes would be too easy for him. You give him the tough coolie jobs. Yeah. You know, carrying cement and like a uh, brick laying and stuff like that. <laughs> um. All right, mo- moving on, um, Lolo. Um, obviously, you have um, uh, you know a lot of people who look up to you, you know, uh, adults and the younger ones as well, um, and also David Neath, um, whom you know as well. Um, we actually have a little challenge uh, going on, um, which is wise words from the wise man. <laughs> um, but it, without knowing, Junior actually started it, and then David had his part as well. So I got to ask you now: yeah. Do you have any wise words um, for people watching, listening? You know, um, what 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 sort of advice would you give um, people? Well, I mean, it's it's. Uh, it's I, I'm Tong and I'm not that wise. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, just follow your passions. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I know it's 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 a cliche for people to say that, but mm-hmm. you know, when you ask me the first question, you know, progression from from being a fighter into a coach, you know, it wasn't planned. It was just a passion that I follow, and then and uh, it just one thing lead to another, and then next minute you have a. Uh, uh, Made a lot of friends who and travel the world and and you know mm-hmm. um, meet people and experience you know I, but that wasn't it never it's way beyond my wildest dream that I that I would have done that all I did was just follow passions and then my passion will, will take you know uh, one step further mm-hmm. and then before you know it I was one of the lucky one to be able to to travel the world and you know. Obviously, uh, with, enjoyed, yeah. with discipline as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. You know, staying focused. Oh, that's really good advice, um, Lolo. Um, oh, we are actually uh, waiting for the big fight happening soon. Um, this pro- this video will probably come out after the fight, but um, yeah, uh, next a uh, big fight, uh, UFC two five three, um, and the main event Israel Adesanya against Paulo Costa. What are your thoughts on that fight? And um, let's go easy. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we definitely. I think. I mean, well, a lot of people here in New Zealand definitely rooting for for Israel, and um, I think he has like a huge fan base, uh, even like in Nigeria as well. I saw them um, some videos. Uh, some people posted. You know, they have like big banners and big TVs around the country mm. of uh, Israel, and um, you know, a lot of them, you know, obviously look up to him. You know. Um, yeah, but w- w- what are your thoughts on the uh, this fight? Well, I, I give us a breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, Isi, of course, is probably the most unpredictable fighter, mm. you know, um, in in history. Uh, but I, I would like to, I would like to, I would like to see Isi, you know, um, chipping away at at, uh, at Costa's legs. Uh, because that's two area that nobody ever exposed apart from Romero. Mm. Uh, attack his body and attack his legs because the guy's always trying to walk through everything, you know. Mm. But I noticed that, you know, when uh, when Romero was fighting, and Romero actually, that was Romero's best fight ever. Against Costa. Yeah, yeah against Costa. That was, to me, that was his best fight. Mm. I think he throws something like over 100 jab, half jab, level, level chain jab, in two round, last two round, he was he threw over a hundred jabs, wow. or, or even faint jab, you know. Mm. And and every time he he threw it, but he never capitalized on it. He threw a jab, and Costa will lean back. Of course, when you lean back, you expose your leg, your calf inside. And mm. so I, I got a, I know Eugene and them, they're, they're very very shrewd. They would have taken that. They would have noticed because um, Romero didn't realize that he bothered the uh, uh, Costa with inside leg kicks. Mm. Uh, but Isi can take to the next level. He can level change to the body and he can go to the head, 
you know. And, you know, he's he's very reactive guy. He comes forward, but when he when you faint and you throw half jab, he react and, and he can react by leaning back or leaning to the side. Mm. So I could see easy throw a white jab and then bring him to the left kick the opposite side where he leaned to. So I hope so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, you know. Um having said that, um he has to um that that cause that he he throws a lot of his uh different ways of throw his left hook. He can throw it, sneak into a uh, it looked like a like a 45 degrees, and you throw along, and you throw, um, which is probably why uh, Romero was tripping to his right, because at least you know there's only one weapon to come there with, with his overhand right. Mm. Uh, but, you know, Easy has a lot of weapons, and they would have studied that fight. They wouldn't know exactly. So uh, my feeling is if all Easy has to do is just, um, try and keep the, the fight in the center. Mm -hmm. Get get that jab busy so you can use that jab to set up low kicks and then level chains mm -hmm. um, and just stick to the game, you know? Um, Would you think it's almost too dangerous for uh, Costa to come in like with the pressure that he did with uh, Romero? I just, there's, there's, no, there's no doubt that, that Costa will be dangerous for the first mm -hmm. two minutes. Mm -hmm. But as you saw it, or uh, as you saw it at the... Romero. Romero fight, his his his, his uh, energy sort of deteriorate after two minutes. Mm. So I, I could see Easy making more later part of of, of the round. It doesn't matter if it's a first round, second round, third or fourth. Mm. Easy will make his, his more in a later part of the round. Um, but then again, you, you never know what he's going to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a, he, he could come and start yeah, it's just flying. You, know? yeah. Yeah. you never yeah. know what's coming yeah. out of the... His, his mind definitely yeah. works in uh, different ways. But you know? I, I, I feel that if he, if he chip away at, at, uh, at Costa's legs early, things will open up for him later on in, in the round anyway. Mm. So, uh, but if, if Costa go in there and try and pressure him like he did... Uh, uh, Romero, he could eat a uh, shin kick early. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, wh what was your reaction to uh, Izzy's fight with uh, Romero? Were you a bit shocked, uh, you know, when the first almost two minutes was it that Romero was just stationary? Well, it, it, you know, and, and that's and that's what I hope is not going to happen with with Scott's Scott's fight. Mm. Um, everybody knew Izzy's string, you know. Mm. Um, is his string is his, his sharp counterfighting, and he'll, he'll put you in a position where he double his power, mm. and um, and that's what he did to to, to Robbie Whittaker, mm. and Romero saw that, and I don't, I don't want nothing on that. I want I just want to <laughs> I want to try and draw him in, you know. Mm. Um, so if Costa take the fight to to Easy, mm. um, it, it's going to be a very entertaining fight while it's last, mm. you know. But yeah. Um, he he has a sneaky left hook where, like he he attack the body or he can rise it up from low up to to the head like half uppercut half mm. hook. He throw it square and he he, he rolls it down. He throw many different ways with his left hand. Mm. His right hand is only one, you know, like you come the opposite side. So I guess um, um, easy already know which which direction is going to go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, that's uh, that's quite a good uh, fight breakdown. Uh, we appreciate <laughs> that, Lolo. Um, <laughs> The other one I wanted to ask, um, Lolo, so you've trained, you obviously train a lot of um, fighters, boxers, kickboxers and all that. Is there um, any up-and-coming fighters that we should uh, take note of? Uh, I, it, it's hard to say because uh, it depends on how long they want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've been asked that, many, that question many times, mm. that who is the most talented guy you fight, mm. you, you ever train, is that a... The most talented guy ever trained, you never see him fight because they, <laughs> they never hang around long enough to, to fight or, uh, you know. But yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it, it's hard to say. I mean, I, if I talk about boxing and, and, and the most exciting uh, uh, prospect, I'll probably follow that guy, uh, Justin Huni. Yep. In Australia. Yep, in Australia. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a very exciting, you know, uh, uh, young fighter. Who can box? He can break down people with close range body shots, and he's got a high energy for long range attack. And and um, yes, and he can switch southpaw and orthodox mm. uh, very comfortably. He's also very um, very agile. Yes, I, yes. I noticed in his uh, the last competition that they had. Um, oh, I can't remember where it was. Yeah, was the Olympic trial. Yeah, yeah the yeah, Olympic trials. Yeah. and uh, we saw some highlights. Exactly. Of his like life. he. 
he 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 schooled this guy from long range, and then he 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 break him down on body as well. Mm. So if if any one fighter that you already have a sort of you know prospect that I've seen, mm. I'm very excited for him. Uh, mm. So I think he's he's going to bring a lot of excitement to the heavyweight. I'm not I'm not putting Junior Fire or Joseph Paga or mm. Donny yeah, Wilder I mean, down like in terms or, of know, prospect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know, like you asked about prospect, mm. and, and and I think he's probably one of the most exciting guys on the rise. Coming up, yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's only about 20 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, he's quite young yeah. From, uh, yeah. from what I heard. He's, he's quite a young mm. fella. Uh, what about like uh, kickboxers or MME fighters? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm, 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 actually, I, I'm actually very, very slick. You know, if, if somebody <laughs> is you know, like John Cohen, have you seen this fight? And I look this fight, you know. But yeah, I... I uh, you know, on, on the on the local scene, you know, there's a lot of good prospects around and a lot of exciting fighters mm. coming up. Um, but you know, right now, let's go easy. Let's go easy. <laughs> easy, bread, <Yeah>. Kai, <laughs> and Shane, all yeah. four of them. Like, yes. Well, we were hoping to uh, to see four victories uh, tomorrow. Bread, probably bread, probably the most exciting. Wow. Yeah, I think I think bread will probably steal the show. Yeah. That, that, uh, yeah. The, even his last two fights was mm. incredible. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. he's. Um, the, I think that that's what's interesting is um, he was saying that the only reason he hasn't been like uh, you know at the top yet is because he come in the UFC later than all the other fellas who, like in his weight, um, in in the lightweight division, mm. you know, he come in later. But he's definitely a very strong. Oh, is they, they already, and, Yeah, they they would have already watched him. They you know, yeah, worry, he'll get his shot. He'll definitely, his shot, yeah. yeah. And I think that was kind of the similar thing when Izzy came into the UFC. Um, that a lot of people were yeah. really aware of him, and uh, in a way, I think in the beginning there were some some fellas who might have avoided him or yeah. stayed away because they've seen some of his old uh, kickboxing uh, in the glory. The glory kickboxing fights and all that, and uh, yeah, he's done. I think, I think when Izzy went to uh, uh, Black Zillion team uh, in 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 uh, the US, yeah, um, to Spa Johnson. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yes. I, I think that uh, you know two things they 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 start watching him there, and also is hey, I could do this, you know, yeah. you know, I I could I could strike out the best strike is here, <laughs> and, you know? so I think that uh, that trip was very beneficial, uh, mm. even going there just as a sparring partner. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well, um, I guess we can. Uh, would you have anything to uh, add on, or you want to talk about? Uh, like like I said, you know, if you start the ball rolling, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we, we're almost about an hour into the uh, podcast. Yeah. Lolo, I don't want to take up uh, much more of your time. Appreciate you, um, you know, um, taking time out of your busy weekend, uh, coming with us and uh, doing this podcast. Um, I just want to wish you um, all the best, good health and uh, success in uh, all the coaching that you are doing and all the things that you uh, want to embark on as well in the future. And uh, definitely we'll keep in touch and uh, we'll definitely meet again. So that's it uh, for us today, guys. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, If you have stayed this long, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. (laughs) And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you, Ali. And awesome. Thanks, my brother. Cheers. Thank you, Lolo. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you on the next one.